One man changed the course of the Volkswagen group forever. Ferdinand Pieck, described as a ruthless engineer, pushed the group in directions never seen before. He was responsible for the purchases of globally known brands and for revolutionising the German giants into the company it is today, with a diverse range of brands and incredible market share across them. But for him, it was all about the cars. An engineer at heart, he was responsible for some of the most iconic, fastest and strangest cars to come out of the group. Whilst his reputation was marred by controversy, Pieck will forever remain a legend in the eyes of many petrol heads for his transformatory work and his emphasis on innovation and engineering. This is the story of how one man changed the car industry forever. Pieck was born in Vienna on the 17th of April 1937, the grandson of Ferdinand Porsche. His father Anton was a lawyer with a 10% stake in the brand. In 1941, Anton became the head of Volkswagen Werk, the factory that produced Volkswagens for the German army. Anton, Ferdinand and Ferry Porsche were arrested by the French for war crimes at the end of the war. They were freed in 1947. In 1951, he lost his grandfather Porsche and the following year Anton Pieck, his father, also passed away. In 1962, Pieck graduated from ETH Zurich in Switzerland with a mechanical engineering degree. His master thesis was about designing a Formula One engine and it was clear that he had an incredible talent for engineering just like his grandfather. In 1963, he began working at Porsche alongside his uncle Ferry. He worked on the development of a 906 which he tested from 1966 when he became head of testing. The 906 was road legal so a compromise had to be made to find racing tyres that would fit. Pieck had success with the 907 but it was a 910 that showed his true talent for car design. In 1968, he became head of development the same year Porsche would finish the 24 hours of Le Mans with a 123 finish. Pieck was also responsible for the 917, one of the most dominant race cars ever. Wild and unstable, the 917 took back to back wins at Le Mans as well as consecutive Can Am championships and five inter series titles. Pieck was also a involved in the development of the 914, a cheaper sports car that rivalled the Carmen Gear. For this, Pieck was given an 8 cylinder model in 1969. The only other one made was given to his uncle Ferry Porsche for his 60th birthday. In 1972, Pieck left the family business after it was established that no Porsche or Pieck could be involved in the management and instead had to sit on the supervisory board. Due to this, he left and founded an engineering office. In 1974, he became head of technical development and a board member at Audi. Three years later, he began development of a rally car. The Quattro was shown off at the 1980 Geneva Motor Show. This pioneered all-wheel drive technology, and the rally car was again an incredible machine. Taking home two championships, it is still one of the most iconic and legendary cars to compete in the sport. In 1981, Pieck returned to the brand he grew up surrounded by as he became a member of Porsche's supervisory board. In 1988, he became CEO of Audi, and later that year, the production of the Audi V8 Quattro would begin. Two years later, it had won the DTM title, beating cars like the BMW M3 Sports Evolution and Mercedes 190e. They would go on to win it the following year as well. In 1993, he would move on to his most prominent role. On the first day of the year, he became CEO of Volkswagen, Audi's parent company. At this point, VW were only three months from bankruptcy, were in need of a saviour, and Pieck turned out to be the man they needed. The group would go on to make some of the most iconic cars under his leadership, and many of them were due to him. Whilst he wasn't directly involved in the development of the new Beetle, he oversaw the transition from concept to production and the positive reception it received. However, the Beetle was not the kind of car Pieck was best known for during his time at Volkswagen. Development of a W12 engine began under Audi, but in 1997 it was transferred to Volkswagen for their use in their concept cars. Pieck also developed a W18 engine on a piece of paper whilst in a Japanese bullet train. Both engines were made up of VR6 engines being put together. The Volkswagen W12 Synchro concept car used the engine he developed and it was shown off at the 1997 Tokyo Motor Show 
but nothing more came of the supercar, despite later concepts like the W12 Roadster. In 1998, he made the decision to buy the Bugatti trademark from Romano Artioli and move the brand back to their native France. This year also saw more purchases for their Volkswagen Group. Bentley and Rolls-Royce were bought in May, and then the Lamborghini was bought and put under the control of Audi in July. Whilst Rolls-Royce was unsuccessful due to BMW owning the naming rights, PX stated that he only wanted Bentley, but Rolls-Royce owned them, so he had to buy both. Tensions built between the German brands, and he ended up selling the spirit of ecstasy and grill trademarks to BMW. Whilst Piek insisted he only wanted the crew brand due to their better sales, it was seen as an embarrassment to lose Rolls-Royce to their rivals. Bugatti would reveal many concepts using the W18 engine, which would eventually become a W16 in the production Veyron. If you would like to learn more about the development and concepts that went into the Veyron, please check out this video I've already made on it. In 1999, Piek was celebrated for a success when he was named the car executive of the century. He began the new millennium with another role, as in 2000, he was named chairman of Scania after VW became a shareholder in the truck company. The next year, his W12 engine would be used in a production car. It was optional in the Audi A8 and a 4 litre W8 was available for the Passat. 2001 also saw the reveal of some legendary cars at the Frankfurt Motor Show. The Veyron was revealed and Piek was very proud to see his brainchild ready for production. Having made the decision to buy Bugatti and then come up with the engine concept, the record breaking Veyron is testament to his passion for engineering and a constant strive for innovation. Despite losing millions per car, the Veyron was a statement from Volkswagen that they were leading a technical revolution and a sign that the car industry was going to change forever. The other important car to launch was the Lamborghini Murcielago. The first Lamborghini to be made under Audi ownership, it's improved sales for the Italian brand and is now one of the most desired supercars due to it being the last properly raw Lamborghini. In 2002, the Phaeton was introduced by Volkswagen. Part of PX plan to move VW up market, it could be had with the W12. Whilst unsuccessful due to its high price and unreliability, it is certainly one of the German brand's most memorable offerings from the last 25 years. Based on the Phaeton was the Continental GT, which saw the rebirth of Bentley and started their era of progression, which has seen them selling more and more. The Continental showed Bentley could still make great cars, even using VW and Audi parts, and it was praised as being one of the best Bentleys ever at the time. 2002 also saw PX retirement as he had reached 65. Due to company policy, he had to step back from the board of management, but he became chairman of the supervisory board. From then on, he was still an incredibly influential figure, but he was no longer directly involved in the development of cars. In 2011, Porsche became part of the VW group, something Piek swore would never happen. In 2015, in the wake of the Dieselgate scandal, Piek resigned from the supervisory boards of Volkswagen and Porsche. It was suggested that his ruthless management style was partly to blame for the scandal, but nobody was ever fully blamed. On the 25th of August 2019, Piek passed away at the age of 82. Often described as meticulous and demanding, it is clear that his management style was effective and its true passion lay in cars and engineering. Forever focused on innovation, Piek would go down as one of the most influential people to ever grace the motoring industry.